Now we will move to the EU Switch Asia SCP facilities, which is a land activity on SCP in the region, but the office is based in Bangkok. So Kun Pucha, the floor is you. 15 minutes, please. Okay. Yes, thank you very much. And before I start, I'll set my alarm, which will go off in 15 minutes. Here, just for your notice. So good morning once again, everyone. Um, unlike my two colleagues before me, um, I'm going to talk about the basics here so that we're all on the same page. Um, I'm going to quickly run over the current state of affairs. This is not the entire IPCC report, so don't worry. It's only one slide. Um, about the SDGs, our colleague from UNIDO already introduced them, so I'm not going to talk too much about it. What are the challenges, not only in terms of science, technology, and innovation, but also in terms of achieving the SDGs, the importance of science, technology, and innovation, and not to forget, since I represent the Switch Asia SCP facility, what is the role of SCP um, in addressing the issues related to the SDGs, and of course, then some general recommendation on the way forward. So without much ado, I'm not very good with technology, as you can see. So uh, we all know that the actions that we have currently are not sustainable and is doing a lot of damage to the planet that we live in. And we tend to forget that there's only one planet that we have. We don't have 50 planets to live on. Um, so that's food for thought for you already. And many resources uh, that we depend on are already beyond their capacity. Um, currently, uh, according to the latest statistics, about 80% of the fish stocks are already on the verge of being um, overused and beyond their limits for natural recuperation. And some of the major ecosystems, like the oceans, uh, the Atlantic and the Pacific Ocean, in fact, the level of uh, acidification is already 100 times more than it was uh, before uh, the pre-industrial levels. So just some food for thoughts. Um, the SDGs, as was introduced, the 2030 Agenda came into being in uh, 2015. And they are ambitious goals. Um, that we all really need to think seriously on how to achieve. Um, it's uh, said, and there's a lot of work that's been done on the SDGs for the last five years. However, we have lots of challenges. Uh, challenges in terms of understanding, really, what the Sustainable Development Goals are, what goes into actually realizing and meeting the targets under the SDGs, and also a proper knowledge. Where is the science base? There is a lot that is happening, but do we know enough? And do we know enough in a timely fashion? So that is a big challenge. Uh, so, and of course, translating the knowledge that we have into policies is very, very important. If you don't have Oh, sorry, yes. If you don't have the science and policy interface, there's not much that we can do. So even if the science is there, the technology, as well as innovations are taking place, if you don't have this interface, um, really, we have a long way to go. And then, based on the science that we have, developing effective policies is also really, really essential. So translating the science into policy is also a challenge that is being faced. Um, funding is always a challenge. Uh, the SDGs are very, very ambitious, as we all know. But how do we go about it? So even if we have the ways, we don't have the means to achieve them. So that really poses a big challenge. Uh, targets and actions. Uh, there's a lot of debate about targets and indicators. But I put targets and actions simply because, A, it's difficult to set the targets difficult to set the indicators, but also difficult to measure the action that is taking place. How are we doing it? So measuring those is also a problem. And of course, monitoring and evaluation are linked to the challenges that I have put down here. So the MNE is not only in terms of the achievement of targets, indicators, and action, but also in terms of the effectiveness of the policies that are being set in place. Um, the importance of science and technology, we all know it, just to refresh our memories. Um, so we cannot really overlook the r importance of STI in achieving the SDGs. Um, they are, as we know, very crucial to achieving them in terms of the scientific knowledge on what the problem is, 
on what are the current trends, uh, which is why when the IPCC report comes out, everybody really looks forward to knowing what is in it, what are the current trends, and then how to implement and achieve the targets that have been set, as well as to perhaps formulate new policies, which I'll talk a little later. Statistical data is lacking. Uh, we keep hearing that there are targets and indicators, uh, but honestly, for many of the SDGs, the targets and indicators are there, but for some they are not there because they are difficult to identify and define. Um, and as I had already mentioned, measuring the achievement is also uh, you know, a challenge, but that's where science can come in to help in setting up the targets and indicators, in providing the statistical data, and then also measuring the achievements that we have. And for asking a policy maker to formulate new policies or to retweak the current policies, they will not do it if you just tell them to do it. They need hardcore evidence for doing this, and this is where science plays an important role. So it is really, really important that we keep that. But what we also have to acknowledge is that there are gaps in terms of knowledge and in terms of implementation too, which is where the science comes in. Um, then, as I'd already mentioned, it's enough that we have existing problems to deal with, but we are faced with new problems every day, new challenges in terms of how to tackle um, you know, the new challenges that take place. So what it really requires is not only new and innovative technology, but there are already existing technologies that are there which need to be repackaged and readjusted and tweaked to sort of match the current um, trends. For that too, you need science and innovation. Uh, so you can't do that. You can't repackage and readjust without having innovative um, ways of thinking. So for example, in the case of technologies, the innovation and in clean energy technologies can assist in the cost reduction and in the acceleration of the displacement of fossil fuels to mitigate the anthropogenic climate change. So this requires science, this requires technology, and this requires innovation. Uh, now coming to the role of sustainable consumption and production. They, there are lots of terminologies floating around. You have circular economy, you have sustainable production and consumption. We talk about it every day without really understanding what it means, um, if I may say so, except for the practitioner who are working on this uh, field and with these topics every day. Um, so what is important is, in order to achieve the sustainable development goals, we really need to look at sustainable ways of consuming and producing. Um, and then this will determine the policy actions, which are based on the scientific data that we have, and it will also help us in developing innovative ways and in, in developing innovative technologies to deal with the SDGs. And also, of course, most importantly, uh, sorry, to develop sustainable alternatives. So what do we mean by sustainable consumption and production? Switching over to sustainable consumption and production would mean looking at the pro problem in a holistic manner from where the resources come to how we consume them to how we dispose of them. Like Janet had said when she had showed an example of uh, the, the cell phone, uh, the mobile phone in the morning. So if we adapt a more sustainable consumption and production patterns, it will help us to enable and then help us to have a positive impact. Um, here there's an example of the middle class, um, and we use this all the time in our presentations. It's because it's the middle class which is causing a lot of alarm, I would say, um, because there is a growing purchasing power, and they are the ones who really do have this attitude of buy and throw, buy and throw, buy and throw. So there really is a need to deal with, of course, different sections of society before we reach this point where we are all fighting for the finite resources that we have. And also the think ahead. Thinking ahead comes from the scientific knowledge we have, the 
technologies that we come up with, and innovation. This is really what it is about, innovating in order to reach our ultimate goal, which is to be more sustainable, to consume and produce more sustainably, and then also contribute to the achievement of the SDGs. So why do we need SCP? I just said it, but I wanted to just show it more. Cleaner production would mean there'll be cleaner, so, uh, cleaner, maybe mobile phones. They'll be, we'll be more conscious of what goes into them and how do we produce them. In order to produce cleaner products, we will have to green the supply chain. So everybody in the supply chain has to be looked at from the person who makes the cover uh, and the person who puts all the metals in it to everything. And that in itself would lead to more sustainable consumption patterns which would have an impact on the overall system. So that's what we are talking about, which is really looking at SCP and lead to more sustainable consumption and production practices. This is, of course, of a direct concern, not only to the government, we always keep saying government, but also the public, the private sector, the civil society, as well as the consumers. So what is needed really is a systems approach to not only look at um, the environmental problems we have, but also to look at how we achieve the sustainable development goals. I think I'm on. Uh, so this is just an example. I, we d deliberately did not take SDG 12. That's on sustainable consumption and production. But SDG 11, as we know, is on cities. But as you can see, when we are dealing with achievement of the SDG 11, which is looking at the cities, you need to have this holistic view. So of immediate concern are, for example, the impact of the environmental uh, impact of waste and air quality, of disasters, housing, transportation, etc., etc. But if you expand out of the circle, you're also then, of course, looking at the SCP in a more holistic manner, which is SDG 12. And then the other SDGs also are related to it. What do you eat? How do you produce it, etc.? So when you see there is this need to look at this holistic approach to <coughs> excuse me to achieve all the SDGs. Uh, I think that's almost so. Now, very quickly, um, I'll talk about uh, what we do. Um, as Janet said, we are oh, sorry, we are part of the same team. Uh, so the Switch Asia SCP facility really is looking at the national uh, policy support component in terms of providing national level assistance to the countries. And the UN Environment uh, is the regional policy advocacy component, which is looking at more the sub-national, uh, sub, sub-regional and the regional level. And we work together on connecting all the relevant stakeholders. Uh, so there's networking, there's distilling the knowledge. So what comes out of the latest scientific findings? What are the latest technologies? And uh, what are the new innovations in the different fields? And then promoting SCP, and then also building what we call communities of interest. Um, and we also have a grants component uh, under the Switch Asia program. Uh, and till now, we've had about, we are working in 24 countries uh, in the region, in Central Asia, South Asia, Southeast Asia, which also includes Mongolia and China. And we've had about 106 projects which are looking at uh, SCP, and each project also uh, works on different SDGs, so they're all aiming to achieve uh, not just SDG 12, but also at different SDGs. So essentially, we work as an enabler, a mainstreamer, a multiplier of all the knowledge that is coming out and the lessons learned, and of course, provides a collaborative platform for people uh, to learn and exchange from each other. I think that's OK, so maybe seeing my time. OK, I have less than two minutes uh, very quickly. So it is very important, really, to look at uh, the SDGs and also consider this concept of sustainable consumption and production together in order to achieve uh, the SDGs. Um, so I will, I guess, not go over this. Mm. Keeping to my time limit, you all have my presentation. Just very quickly, in terms of the way forward, um, so achievement of the SDGs really requires 
uh, an understanding and adopt, adoption of sustainable consumption and production uh, processes. And this is all based on innovation and also on the technologies which are there and are being developed. Investment in financing for new and innovative technologies are very, very important. Um, we have to convince the government, but in order to convince the government, you need the science. So it's all interrelated, really. Um, and also an adoption of a holistic approach to uh, achieving the SDGs. We, be we need to better mainstream sustainable consumption and production practices in the existing policies, and until unless we need separate policies on SCP, which makes no sense. To me personally, I think it's better to integrate them in the current policies. There, my time is up. I will take two more seconds. Um, of course, we need innovation in policies. So the term innovation, science, technology, innovation, is not only innovation in terms of technology, but also innovation in terms of the policies that we have. And uh, translating the policies into practices, uh, especially those which are related to uh, the SDGs and the SCPs. More often than not, when we talk to the government in, in the various countries, they are already working on sustainable consumption and production. And they are also addressing many of the SDGs. But they don't do it consciously. It's only when you sit down and you talk to them and they realize, oh yes, we are working on this, we are working on this, we are working on this. So it is also important on how we package and communicate the right knowledge. That's also very important. And of course, as I said, and I will repeat again in the very end, that there is really, really a need to translate science into policy and to work uh, very um, proactively on this interface between science and technology. I'll stop there. Thank you so much. Thank you.